Welcome to today's guided practice session. My name is Adam Manis. Today we are practicing a very cool chord technique that when I think of this technique, I think Bill Evans first. I think of someone who used this technique um, to great effect and really used it in his comping and in his soloing, in, in his, you know, um, his chord soloing would use this technique. What is this technique I'm referring to, you might ask? I'm so glad you asked. It is the technique of using triads in our right hand solos. Um, and so it's a very simple idea wherein, uh, say if we have like a, a F major seven here, right? Wherein we can play melodic content using triads diatonically on the F major scale, right? So if the F major scale is F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, and F, we can build our triad, our F major triad, F, A, and C and then just move that up that F major scale, right? So you hear Bill Evans do this quite a bit and it just, it's, it's a really cool sound. It's actually, as I was doing some research for this, um, this guided practice session, I was listening to him play this stuff and I was thinking like, this is really orchestration what he's doing. It's like he's putting, He's putting the melody in the woodwinds for a second, and then below he's got the French horns in his left hand playing the, the left hand voicings as he's doing this. So it's a really cool arranging technique, really. So I have an idea of how we might work on this. This is how I, I would like to work on this today anyway. So here I have a 2-5-1 in the key of F. I'll make this a little larger. And our course of two five one in the key of F is our two chord is a minor seven chord. Our five chord is a dominant seven chord, and our major chord is just our F six nine. Right, two G is the two of F five C. Right, C seven is the five of F, and then F major six nine. Bam, that's the one. So we can use on that G minor seven. Right, we we know that a Dorian scale is sort of our primary choice for note choices. Not always, but it's a great place to start. And so we can build our triads off of this Dorian scale. So, right, our first triad here is G, B flat, and D. And then we just move this up, that Dorian scale. By the way, the Dorian scale is, of course, the second degree of the F major scale. So it's all white keys with just a, a flatted B. Right? So let's just start there. Let's start with that Dorian, with that two chord. I got my trusty metronome. We're practicing together, so get to your piano, because here we go, we're gonna play right now. We'll go, we'll start fairly slowly, and just, I think this is good. So just a word on fingering at the piano, because fingering for this, it's both important, and then you just kinda gotta get past it, and you just have to go for it in certain situations. You're never gonna have with this, the perfect fingering for what you're hearing melodically. So at certain times, you're just gonna have to just dive in and hope that it sounds great. But let's see if we can get some good fingering here, at least from the start from these scales. So for this first triad, I like to go one, two on the B flat and then four on the D. And then when I move to that A triad, right? The next triad up, the A minor triad, I like to, uh, with the top two notes, go up to, from the two and the four to the three and the five. And then the thumb just plays the next one. All right? I think this is a, the most logical, cleanest way, right? Then we get a nice legato sound between those two notes. Then when we go up to the B flat, I kind of do the opposite thing. The three and the five will turn into four and five, right? So the third finger moves to, for this B flat triad, the third finger will move to the four and the top the top note will just be five, five. And then the, the bottom, so it's like the bottom two, right? Instead of one, we go from one, three to two, four. So it's like the first, the first triad, one, two, four, and then one, three, five, and then two, four, five. And then you kind of start over at the C, right? One, two, four one, three, five, and then for this, one, two, four, one, three, five. So that really, one of the most important um, ways to, to go between these is one, two, four, one, three, five. And then there are the other ways that are just kind of, you have to deal with the key, but that one, two, four to one, three, five, from the bottom up again, 
I think you're gonna find is the smoothest way to get this sound. Now, as we practice our G minor seven going up in triads on this Dorian, I want you to play some kind of Dorian voicing in your left hand. I have one here that's rather large, it's in tenths, that I can hit fine, but if you can't, I recommend just the root and the seventh, the G and the F, or the bottom two notes of what I have written here. You're gonna get the sound, right? As you're, as you're playing these thick triads melodically, you're gonna get that Dorian sound. So don't feel like you have to fill up everything with your left hand. You don't have to do very much and your audience is going to feel the harmony. It's gonna, it's gonna be very clear what color you're using here. Let's try it. Let's go uh, in eighth notes. Just up an octave and back down, right? One of our goals here is no sustain pedal, use no sustain pedal at all, and try to keep it as smooth as possible. You know, using the, the fingers, staying down as long as possible, and then moving at the very last second, and then that fingering, right? That fingering trick of one, two, four, to one, three, five, to get as legato of a sound with no sustain pedal. Don't cheat yourself on this. You have to practice it this way. And then when you're on the gig and you want to use sustain pedal, hey, you can use just as little as possible because your hands are doing all the good work for you. Let's try it. Da, da. Eighth notes up and down an octave. One, two, three, and four, and. Down. Again, three, and four, and. Again, think smooth. Try to hear the smoothest sound that you can hear in your head right before you play each note and see if that uh, can just happen with your hands. You gotta hear the sound first though. Try it. Two, three, and four, and. Once you have sort of the general notes here, see if you can just hear it as smooth as possible and then don't do anything about it. Just hear it as smooth as possible and watch what happens. Two, three, and four, and. I didn't hear that. Again, three, and four, and. No sustain pedal. And while we're practicing it this slow and just up and down, see if you can do it without any of this stuff. Without any notes striking before any other or being released before any other. You don't want this either. Like where a note is just coming up because your fingers. See if each of the three notes of each triad can strike and release at exactly the same time. Again, don't try to do that. Try to hear it and then let it happen. Two, three, and four, and. Three, again. One more time here. One, two, practice with me. Three and four and. Mm. All right, let's do just one more tempo with these. We have a lot to get through today. I'm gonna do a major two, five, one, and I'm gonna do a minor two, five, one in both of this. One more tempo on the G7 right here. Same, same scale, just a little bit faster. Two, three, and four. So there's our Dorian sound. 
Now, for our five chord, we have a lot of options, and I debated for a long time which one to practice with you today. But the one that I want to work on more, the one that I want in my playing more, and the one that really reminds me of Bill Evans' sound is the Lydian dominant. Check this out. Hey, check that out. <laughs> right, it's this very airy, spacious, dominant sound. And I think it works really, really well. In fact, I think it works the best for a major 251 as the dominant because it coincides with sort of the the mysticism of the triad, right? And we have the mysticism of this particular scale. Um, so let's practice that, our Lydian dominant. Now, a Lydian dominant, of course, is just a dominant scale, right? A mixolydian scale in C, a, mix a regular mixolydian scale is C, D, E, F, G, A, B flat, right? It's the F major scale from the fifth degree. But the Lydian dominant scale has that sharp four or sharp 11. So you have C, D, E, F sharp, G, A, and B flat. Again, a very open, a very airy, a very mysterious sound. I love playing these as dominant chords leading to major ones. And it works, again, Just it's just killing with this triad. So let's try it. We'll go back to a pretty slow tempo. Same kind of fingering rules apply where you can go between one, two, four, and one, three, five. Depending on, actually it works really well. This is a bear. <laughs> the B flat D F sharp here at the top. For that, I'm doing two, uh, two, three, five. You could do one, two, five, getting that. You could do one, three, five. That's not bad. One, three, five is not bad. Huh. The more you know. Okay. Let's try this. Our Lydian dominant scale up and down an octave in eighth notes. Two, three, and four. Gotta get that one, three, five. Let me get the fingering. Two, three, and four, and again, three and four, and is that great? What a sound. <laughs> Not that. Again, three and four and again, three and four. And play with me. Hey. Gotta get that. I really want that sound. I really want that F sharp. Two, three, and four, and Again, three and four and one more time. Three and four and no sustain pedal. Let's do it one more time and really try to hear the sound. What does this scale sound like in triads on your instrument? Completely smooth completely even in volume with every note of the triad attacking and releasing at exactly the same time with no sustain pedal. That's a thought that should be in your mind right now as we work this through technically. Because if you can't hear that sound, how are you gonna achieve it? How are you gonna know what to do? And really, we don't wanna be thinking like, uh, you know, maximum pressure on the middle finger. On, we don't wanna think that. We wanna hear the sound and we wanna just clearly and smoothly get out uh, of our heads and to our hands. Let's try it. Three and four and hear it one more time three and four and there it is okay let's do one more tempo real quick on this we want to try to get these up to tempo and in fact uh, I didn't want to. I didn't want to like push tempo on this, but I encourage you to take your time and see how much you can ramp this up. Because the faster you can play this, obviously, the more effective it becomes in your improvised solo. So we just want to get a little bit faster. Let's try this. One, two, 
3, and 4. And Last time, three and four. And All right, let's keep it going. We're not even gonna stop. And we're gonna do F major. We kind of alluded to this in the beginning. Same principles of fingering, one, two, four to one, three, five are gonna work really well. Let's see if we can get right there. This is important to not, to sometimes just jump in and see what happens when we are forced into something like this because this is like kind of a real life situation here. Here we go. One, two, three, and four. And three and four. And And hear that sound, we want it as smooth as possible. No sustain pedal, don't cheat yourself on this. Two, three, and four. And three, and four. And Last time, three, and four. And Practice with me here. Let's get it. Okay. All right. So we have it, right? That's it. Done and done. No, not really. We should we should actually experiment with using this in our solo. So Bill uses this a lot in solos or in intros, and it's it feels improvised when he's doing it. He's able to improvise with this technique, and that's what we want to be able to do. So ultimately, we want to be able to play this two five one as a solo. Three, four. Mm. do Lydian on that major too if you want might sound nice and airy that's the thing this is a very open airy pastel kind of sound right impressionistic if you will um which was a sound that that bill was famous for and so let's practice this i'll slow this down a little bit i want you to play some chords right just a two five you can do just simple chords even shells in your left hand just so you can hear the triads over those chords you're gonna find that it's difficult to actually come up with compelling things. You might try breaking it up with single line. Like just adding it in as a bit of cayenne pepper to your salt and pepper of, of your single line improvisation, right? So it doesn't have to be the whole thing, although you could try. Like that, something definitely Bill would do would be a big line, you know, like that kind of like that triplet thing that he would always do uh, is very, very effective. So let's try it. I will play the bass. You practice going between the two, the five, and the one. We'll do a bar of G minor seven, a bar of C seven sharp eleven, and then two bars of F major six nine. Let's try it. I got the bass for you. One. Two, one, two, three, and.
one more time. One more time. Well, there's one way to do it. Like I said, each of these chords, just like you can use any uh, any scale that is appropriate over any of these two five one chords, you can use any of these triads too. So if instead of G minor seven, you wanted to do G Lydian dominant, it sounds beautiful. If you wanted to do like C half whole diminished, I almost did that. Uh, it's it's really really cool. So. What do we do if we want to do this over a minor two five one? What if we wanted to do it over a minor two five one in F, right? In F minor two five one. So I have pretty much the same left hand voicings except for that F melodic minor and that F F minor six nine, right? We got a G half diminished seven, which is the root and shell in the in the bass. Again, if you can't reach that tenth, you can just do those bottom two notes. Our C seven alter is our five chord, and then an F minor six nine. Now this is very uh, I think characteristic of Bill Evans to me. I think this was in one of the first solos I transcribed of his on Beautiful Love. I forget what record that's from. I'll have to look that up. But um, this idea of using the three melodic minors, we've talked about this before and how to deal with minor two five ones. We've talked about how to not use the melodic minor, but if you want a refresher here, we can use three different melodic minor scales over our minor two five one, and it sounds awesome. So over our two chord, right, which is G half diminished, G minor seven, flat five, we can use a B flat melodic minor scale. Right, the melodic minor scale has a minor third and a major seven. So our B flat melodic minor scale is B flat, C, D flat, E flat, F, G, A, and then we're back to B flat. Now we can use this as our scale over G half diminished, and this sounds so excellent uh, with the G half diminished in triads. Right, it's that Lydian, or sorry, uh, Locrian sharp two is the name of the scale. Which I've really never said in my life until I started doing these YouTube things. But Locrian Sharp 2 is the scale we would use for this. Right? The B flat melodic minor. Then on our on our five chord, on our C7 alt, right, that altered scale is the seventh degree of the D flat melodic minor. And you can build triads off of that. Like I have it starting here on D flat because I think it just sounds better actually with the top note being A flat instead of this, this diminished triad here. How great is this? And then for our, our one chord, our F minor six nine, that's F melodic minor, right? F, G, A flat, B flat, C, D, and E natural. Great. film soundtrack up in this so yeah let's just try just that G All right let's just run in eighth notes that G half diminished right with our B flat melodic minor starting with G on the bottom some amazing shapes in here amazingly beautiful shapes here with this locrian sharp two sound again the b flat melodic minor starting on g what are the triads that come up it starts with two diminished triads and it sounds killing let's try it eighth notes up an octave and down two three four and Not bad. Two, three, and four. And four. Look at that. There's an augmented triad in this. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Two, three, and four. And four. Again, two, three, and four. This is what's so great. I just want to stop and appreciate what's so great about the melodic minor scale and doing triads this way. Look, we have starts with just two diminished triads, right? G diminished, A diminished, and then a B flat minor, and then a C minor, and then a D flat augmented triad, and then an E flat major and an F major. So you have 
Such great sounds going on. Let's do it a couple more times. Two, three, and four, and play with me. Two, three, and four, and again, nice and smooth. Two, three, and four, and so beautiful. Two, three, and four. Hear the sound smooth. Woo, man, that's nice. Okay, let's move on to our C7 altered chord, right? It's the same, we're gonna use the same melodic minor shapes, but from a different melodic minor scale, from D flat melodic minor. And we'll start on D flat here. I think it's a stronger way to start. But again, it's like we have a minor triad, a minor triad, an augmented triad, a major triad, a major triad, a diminished triad, a diminished triad. And so it's so cool about making these triads on a melodic minor scale. Let's see if we can get right to this. It's going to be challenging, fingering-wise. There's a lot going on here. There's a lot of thumb on black. Let's try it. Two, three, and four, and Keep going. Funny, we're slower than we were with the major, but it feels super fast. Two, three, and four, and. With this one, you might even think like minor, minor, augmented, major, major, diminished, diminished. That's the pattern. Or maybe don't layer that much thought onto it, just play it. <laughs> Two, three, and four, and whoo, I could overthink some things. Again, three, and four, and. Isn't that beautiful? One more time. Two, three, and four. Okay, so that is our dominant chord going to the minor. That's, that's a common thing that you might do on an altered chord is use those triads from the altered scale. Now is when the payoff pitch is pitched. Now is when the entire world opens up to a, a, a sound of such smoky, delicate beauty that, okay, I'm, over, I'm overselling it, but it is true. This is one of my favorite sounds in music. And that's when we resolve from that altered scale to our F melodic minor. Smoky. It's just, it's everything that's beautiful and depressing and enlightening all at once. Let's try that. <laughs> Our F melodic minor, it's pretty easy to play actually. There are, I do, here on, on the A flat augmented to B flat major, I do uh, two, four, and five on both. I could sometimes do two, three, five on the A flat up to two, four, five. It's tough. It's a tough one. Yeah. I'll do two, three, five to two, four, five from A flat, that A flat uh, augmented to B flat major. Let's try it. Eighth notes up and down an octave. Two, three, and four. Three and four and three and four and oh man, so gorgeous. Three and four and Not easy. Three and four and one more time. 
three and four. Lovely, just lovely. Okay, let's try uh, improvising with these. Again, you can try using nothing but these. It sounds good. If you're having a hard time with it, I, I suggest kind of staying in one, you know, geographically similar region, right? Try to hang out in one area and see if you can change with the, change the scale, change the tries you're using with the chord. So like, Even as simple as that, two of them per chord, you know? Now, if you don't want to do all of that, you can just start incorporating a few of these into your single note lines. So you could be like... Like that kind of... You know, just like to, to punctuate your single note lines. Whatever you do, have fun with it, right? This is such a cool sound. Um, it really, just imagine that you're, you have slick back hair and big glasses and you're smoking a cigarette and you're hunched over and Bill, you know, get that Bill vibe going. All right, let's keep it slow. I'll play the bass, play some shells if you'd like, or what I have written here, if you can uh, get those, even just the lower two notes will work really well. And I'll play the bass and just give this a shot. Here we go. Let's practice. One, two, one, two, three. staying in one little geographic region. See if you can change those triads when the chord changes. G half diminished, C7 alt, F minor 6 9. Last time, last time. All right, all right. That's the sound, right? Isn't that a fun sound? That's like something that, I don't know, I feel like the more I work on it, the more I can't wait to get it into to all the aspects of my playing. I've probably been trying to cram it in where it shouldn't go for a while here <laughs> without properly working on it like I should, but I'm glad we got this session in today. I feel actually super confident with it right now, and I might, uh, I might also just inappropriately uh, jam this concept uh, in music where it might not belong. But that's the fun of it, right? Is where we, where we try to fit in. All right, thanks everybody for your practice today. Uh, join us tonight. Peter Martin and I are listening to the classic Ella and Lewis record. Um, uh, that's Ella Fitzgerald and Lewis Armstrong with the Oscar Peterson trio. So check that out. Also check out the Piano Access Pass. There's a link here where you can sign up for the Piano Access Pass. We do this live every day over there. And there's Q&As on Zoom back and forth. We talk about all these concepts and uh, we really mold our practice sessions 
uh, as a community. And it's a, it's quite an awesome community we have over at the Open Studio Jazz Piano Access Pass community and the Guided Practice Sessions. So join me over there. And I'll be back here Friday. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you liked what you saw. And uh, you can get notifications to, uh, to keep you in the loop about what's going on here with Open Studio. So, yeah, check it out, everybody. And uh, happy practicing.